Hey, my name is Boris and in this video I'm about to show you how to make this awesome synth patch from this track you're about to hear. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the patch that I have just soloed. It's this um, pitched main chord element. We're going to basically deconstruct this preset from scratch. We're going to use Ableton's wavetable synthesizer and a couple of stock effects. And uh, it's going to be a really fun exercise. I've also made a tutorial on another synth sound from this very project file. That one was a little bit uh, simpler to use. So if you're a beginner, you can check that one out. Before we get started, this uh, project file was called Sun Vibes Progressive House and it's available on our website. You can uh, check it out there. And this very preset is part of a wavetable presets pack, which you can also check out uh, on the PMO website. And the preset pack is called Deep Sounds. And one quick thing before we get started with making the patch, uh, let's take a look at the chords quickly. Uh, we are playing simple fifths. If you're new to chords, I've also made a tutorial recently, so you can check that one out. We're going in fifths in the C major scale from C to E to G and back to C. And this technique of using fifths is very nice. You can use it with a lot of synth sounds. Playing the root and the fifth is sometimes a good idea, especially in the case of presets like this one, because uh, we are pitching the whole sound and it's creating this awesome sort of gliding feeling. Okay, let's just get started. I'm going to disable this track, copy the MIDI information onto a new one. Let me just quickly create a MIDI track. I'm just going to drop a brand new instance of Wavetable onto this track. Here we are. I'm just going to expand the view so that we see all that is going on here. Let me just solo this track and loop this area. Okay, so a very quick introduction to Wavetable synthesis. This synth is divided into pretty much three sections. We've got the oscillator step, which uh, consists of the oscillator 1, oscillator 2, and the sub oscillator, which uh, you can use to emphasize the base. You've got the envelopes and the LFOs, which you can use to modulate any parameter in your synth. There is this uh, filtering section over here. Plus, there is also uh, this matrix, which is uh, used in conjunction with uh, the envelopes and the LFOs, which basically allows you to modulate certain parameters in the synthesizer to assign, uh, for example, an envelope to the pitch, which is when, what we're going to do in this tutorial. And in this patch, we're going to use all three wavetable sound sources. So oscillator one, oscillator two, as well as the sub. So for now, let's just enable oscillator one and let's choose the shape that we are looking for. So the first one is going to be a saw wave. Let's just move up the slider. Uh, I'm going to settle around 64%. And here we have a saw wave. Let's just play it. I'm going to turn it down because it's not a too pleasant sound. It sounds very full. Uh, you've got a lot of high frequencies, so we are going to be shaping that in a while. Oscillator 2 is going to also be sort of a saw wave, but with a little bit more harmonics. So let's enable oscillator 2 and go to from basics. You can choose the quad saw wave table. And uh, if I disable oscillator 1 quickly and uh, quickly go through the shapes here, then you're going to hear that as uh, the lower we go here, the more upper harmonics are included. So we're going to stay somewhere around here with this very sharp upper harmonic area. And let's enable oscillator one back. And we are leaving both of these at uh, zero dB, so all the way up with the gain. And now let's enable the sub as well. And this is playing a sine wave basically. And we're not going to pitch it down. Let's stay at zero and let's uh, hear how it beefs up our sound a little bit.
Okay, so don't worry if the sound uh, by now is not satisfying. We're going to shape it in just a second. The first thing, let's uh, take a look at the amp curve. So this envelope over here, we're going to add a little bit of attack and a little bit of decay. So let's uh, mess around with the attack. Okay, so let's settle around, uh, around 90 milliseconds. Okay, now with the decay, uh, we are going to go to two, three seconds, sort of. And um, with the sustain, let's go uh, more down so that our sound goes up in volume and then the gain decreases. And I'm going to leave the release uh, as it is. Now with envelope 2, uh, we are going to shape the pitch of our sound. But before we do that, let's just uh, make sure we have something more pleasing to listen to. Let's just use a low pass filter and uh, shave off a few of the high frequencies here. So by default, Wavetable is using a 12 dB per octave curve and some analog synths, for example, the Minimoog are famous for using 24 dB per octave curves. And personally, I prefer 24 dB, so we are going to use that. And um, let's add a little bit of resonance as well. And uh, with the frequency uh, let's let's hear what sounds good we can also increase the gain now because we don't have these harsh high frequencies okay so um, around one kilohertz sounds good to me just a quick break before we go back to the tutorial if you find these type of videos helpful we can highly recommend the PML Academy with over 35 full-length online courses spreading over topics like writing chords and melodies or arranging your songs to producing entire songs from start to finish. So check out the link in the description to see what's inside the All Courses bundle exactly. Uh, let's go back to the envelopes and let's uh, shape the sound of this gliding effect. So let's use envelope 2 for this one. First of all, let's assign this envelope to the pitch of the patch. Here is how you can do it. You basically you need to drag this little box where it goes to pitch and envelope 2 all the way down to minus 48. Instead of raising our pitch with the envelope, it is going to reverse that and it's going to decrease our pitch, but uh, we'll go all the way down with the sustain so that our pitch eventually returns to the default pitch. Okay, so zero attack, we don't need any attack over here and uh, basically we're going to shape it with the decay. Let's uh, hear what sounds good. To me around 280 is satisfying. It has that nice gliding effect, but it's not too long or too short. Okay, now one last thing we need to do in Wavetable is adding an LFO. And this is basically going to add a slight wow effect here. And by wow, I mean uh, you're going to hear as the sound uh, raises and uh, lowers in pitch. And that's going to be just a slight effect. Sometimes you can hear that on old records that the pitch fluctuates a little bit. And uh, this is just a slight um, final touch that we are going to add into Wavetable before we start processing our sound. Let's use LFO1 for this purpose. And let's assign this to the pitch. Not too much. Maybe let's stick around seven over here. We'll adjust the rate, but maybe it's actually not necessary. We'll see if that sounds good by now. Oh, of course, we need to decrease the amount. If you want more precise adjustments, for example, I am somewhere around 3% and I want to go slightly up or slightly down, you can just select the parameter you're adjusting and press the up or down arrow. And uh, basically here we can go up by 1%. Okay, so this is a very slight adjustment. We're adding a little bit of pitch fluctuation and uh, it adds up. 
at uh, the end. Okay, so let's proceed with effects. We're just going to use two effects here. Uh, first, let's start with an auto filter and uh, we are going to cut some lows here so that our sound is a little bit cleaner. Okay, so let's go to auto filter. Uh, you're going to find it in audio effects, auto filter, and uh, we're going to add a high pass curve. We're also going to use a 24 dB per octave curve. No resonance, not necessary this time and uh, we're going to shave off the frequencies below 100 hertz. Let's go down here and hear what it sounds like. Okay, so we are around 100 hertz and uh, the sound immediately got much cleaner. We can A-B this sound now. And this is very useful because now uh, our bass is not going to interfere with the low frequencies of the synth. The last thing, we can add a reverb and uh, we're just going to use the stock reverb from Ableton and the stock settings. Let's just change a few parameters. So first of all, let's mess around with the dry wet knob. Okay, so around 32% sounds good. And uh, let's disable the high cut completely and use a decay time, maybe slightly higher. Okay, so around one and a half second and um, we are pretty much done with our sound now. There are a few things that were done in the original patch that I have not included in the tutorial. Maybe we can A-B between the sound we have created and uh, the original patch and see what the differences are. One thing uh, we could add is the sidechain compressor, which is doing very basic pumping. Let's not go through the exact settings over here, but it's very, very simple. Basically, we're going down on threshold and assigning uh, the audio from to the sidechain track. And this way we are just creating this pumping effect, very useful in Progressive House. So maybe let's compare once again. Okay, so uh, a few things are added here. The result is not far from it. First of all, here we've got an envelope uh, assigned to the filter, but it is not doing much because then the, the, the high frequencies are reduced with uh, some filtering here at uh, the end. Yes, yeah, so if we expand this chain, uh, we have the exactly same reverb, slight delay, it's not pretty much audible, and there are more elaborate EQ curves over here. So uh, in mid side mode, first of all, there's a boost, but uh, in fact, this sound is pretty much all mono so it doesn't matter that much with uh, eq here we are boosting some uh, upper mids but um, there are no huge changes done with the eqs the filtering we have done pretty much we've used the high pass just like this one and um, we've also added the low pass which was already in wavetable with the utility it's just a gain difference and that's pretty much all that is going on the sound in the actual track is changing because uh, there is some automation on the filter frequency. Uh, let me just show you what it looks like. So in some parts the, the sound is a little bit uh, muffled. And it opens up, for example, during the drop. But these are very small changes we could uh, definitely add something like this over here. Uh, all you need to do is just enable automations, click the frequency knob and um, change uh, the frequency as you like. Okay, so that is pretty much it. Make sure guys to check out our wavetable pack uh, and this way you can get some really awesome sounds. If you are looking for Ableton Live courses, whether you're a beginner or a more advanced user, we've got a lot of these on our website. So make sure to check these out. Uh, mixing, mastering courses, all of the good stuff. See this project in the description. Thank you guys once again very much for watching and I hope to see you next time in the next videos. Bye.